Hi guys! I'm a good witch of the West. <laughs> I didn't know there was a good witch of the West until just now. It's better than but the wicked witch is. of the West. I'm the good witch of the West. And I am somebody else. <laughs> good to see you tonight. Hi guys! We hope you had a happy Halloween. Um, we're still trying to remember who we really are, right? So maybe we need to tell them yeah, who we really are. So. so I'll get rid of this. I'll get rid of this. Woo! So. And my my real my real costume, right? My so real who, me. Who we truly <clears throat> are is, is Andy and Jennifer, and Jennifer Smith. Hi guys. Hope you're having a great night, great day. So I know that Halloween was yesterday, but it kind of lingers a little bit. You probably still have candy and stuff that's <laughs> lingering. Uh, yeah. But I wanted to tell a scary story. That's a fun part of Halloween, a good tradition. And so, um, I don't know if any of you remember uh, the book series, Goosebumps, and they even made it, I think, into an after-school series where they put some of those uh, stories into the, whatever, short, <laughs> short TV movies. Uh, but I remember this one about uh, a, a girl who was kind of shy, timid, got pushed around a lot. And at Halloween time, she came across a, a mask, not like this one, much more spooky, creepy than this one, very demonic looking. And she would put that on and feel powerful because nobody would know who she really was. And she went around just like scaring the daylights out of people. And she had so much fun doing that that she ended up wearing that mask more and more to scare more and more people. And after a while, she realized that the more she wore the mask, the more it started to change how she felt and, and saw people. It was changing her. And this story ended well for her, but she realized what was happening is that mask was becoming her. It was the the mask was turning into her skin. It was you know that was the the creepy story yeah. that, was like, oh, that, that that mask was going to overtake who she really was and turn her into a permanent demon. Uh, it fortunately ended well. She realized what was happening and she was able to somehow get that off and save herself and threw the mask away. Uh, but there's there's a good Halloween story. But I saw something similar to this happen. Uh, to one of my children when they were young. Uh, one of our sons, uh, when he was about seven years old, uh, we noticed that he was very frequently having bursts of anger over everything and sometimes like nothing at all. And we just stand there and the whole family just shocked and looked at him like, what is going on with this fit of anger? And then he'd turn around and laugh. He was just... <laughs> <laughs> joking around. He was just pretending to be angry over stuff. But he did that a lot. And we noticed over time that pretty soon he wasn't laughing about it anymore. The joke was done. And he has started to create this pattern of being angry over everything or even nothing at all. And it started to become more of a permanent nature of his character. So the mask. The mask was the mask that he was putting on for fun just like the girl in that story, it started to change his personality and the way he reacted to things. It, it, it really was kind of scary. So imagine you, um, or you, or me, <laughs> being like the demon, right? Um, and not remembering who we truly, truly are because we're putting on these negative masks and how that is really damaging our relationships. And a big key is remembering who we truly are inside. And you know, if we were to strip away everything that you own, your house, your car, your clothes, if you could even unzip your body and step out of it and see who you really are at the core and that divine, amazing potential of who we are meant to be, sometimes we forget who we're meant to be. So just like our son, thinking it was fun to be angry all the time, and um, he started taking that on to where it was becoming more a part of him, 
and that's not who he really is deep inside. He's this amazing, joyful soul, talented, talented young man. And um, so sometimes if we don't remember who we truly are, there's going to be a lot more misunderstandings, hurt feelings, um, lack of trust in our relationships. But on the flip side, when we're remembering who we truly are and our divine potential, and we're remembering who others truly are and all the goodness and the, the glory that's in them, um, we are going to be able to be more compassionate, understanding, patient, and we're actually going to heal and uplift our relationships rather than tear them down and damage them. So the trick might be, well, how do I know who I am? <laughs> sometimes that's, that's what it seems like. It's a matter of, I don't, I don't even know. Or sometimes it's like, we need to remember who we are. Remembering um, who we are, yeah. So, whether you're established like a first time figuring out who you are or you just need to remember and reconnect with that divine nature in you, it, it's kind of the same thing, but it, it's, it's important to either remember or, or discover for the first time what that divine nature in you really is. So I have an amazing quote to share with you tonight from a wonderful leader in the Church of Jesus Christ of Latter-day Saints, and he's uh, full of wisdom. And he's actually now uh, President Nelson of the church. But Russell M. Nelson, when he was in the Quorum of the Twelve Apostles, he uh, gave a speech at BYU Hawaii to some young millennials there. And what he says, Therefore, my first recommendation is to learn for yourselves who you really are. Ask your Heavenly Father in the name of Jesus Christ how he feels about you and your mission here on earth. If you ask with real intent, over time, the Spirit will whisper the life-changing truth to you. Record those impressions and review them often and follow through with exactness. I promise you that when you begin to catch even a glimpse of how your Heavenly Father sees you, and what he is counting on you to do for him, your life will never be the same. And we can relate that. So think about that in terms of who you are and what he is counting on you to do for him in your marriage and in your family relationships. Knowing who you are is going to create wonderful, inspiring, empowering, nurturing relationships in your marriage and in your family. And it's a, basically, I get out of this, it's a four-step process. You're going to ask, you're going to listen, you're going to write it down, and you're going to obey with exactness. Four steps. That's doable. We can do four steps. So amazing, amazing wisdom. I'm and Andy and I, through the past few years, have done this for ourselves and come to know who we truly are and that just like you, we have an amazing divine purpose and mission here to accomplish on earth, but we have to seek and understand what that is. So we invite you to do that, to follow those four steps. Um, I also have another fun idea for you. We often have our clients do this, um, and I will grab it right here. So this is this is really good. Um, preschool. Yeah, preschool. and it might be it's, hard to it see. It sounds but... like a preschool activity, but it is amazing. It is an amazing tool to help people remember and reconnect to who they truly are. So a lot of times we think about all the negative weaknesses about ourselves. That's not who we really are, right? That's a mask. Who we really are is strong and amazing and full of divine potential, and so. This is called the Who I Am poster. Now, I'm gonna just cover us up for a minute. Yeah. So on my wall, it would hang like this. Uh, my husband's, his is shaped more like Peter Pan, Superman pose, right? Like with, with the arms out, the hand on the hip. But so you can make whatever shape you like. That's an empowering kind of a shape. And then you fill this in with who you truly are. And just because you might not be perfect in something, like I have a friend who put hard working and she said, but sometimes I feel lazy. <laughs> I 
but the true, my true friend, Amy, she is hardworking, right? So it's not that we're perfect in these things, but when we remember who we truly are, so like some of mine, I have forgiving, friendly, um, committed, so we're committed to giving you a message every week, um, confident, brave, compassionate, all these great things about yourself, and you fill in all the space. Try not to leave like a lot of white spaces in there because you are amazing. There's so many things you need to remember about who you truly are. And then um, look at this every day and maybe choose one thing on there to get even stronger and, and improve on of who you really are and who um, you're aspiring to be, right? So who I, who I am poster, super great activity for yourself or with your spouse or your family, what, try that. What I really like about this is you look at this every day and it is most likely a much clearer reflection of who you truly are than even looking in the mirror at yourself. This, if you will follow that four steps, and this is a way that you can write it, you ask, you listen, you write, and there's something like this is a fun way to write it, and then you follow through. These things are what you follow through on, and this is a more accurate reflection of who you are. Who you really are, yep. So, remember, masks are okay once in a while. Um, we all sometimes put on a mask for Halloween, and within our relationships, we sometimes step out of who we really are and put on a mask. So, you know, if you're ever thinking and feeling angry, or you're feeling impatient, or critical, or you are unforgiving, or lazy, <laughs> Those things, whether it's you or you see it on someone else, it's the mask. And just, we can forgive the mask. Just realize that that's not who we truly are. So. So when you remember who you truly are, you're going to have more compassion, patience, understanding, um, and, and be kinder to one another. So remember who you truly are. Love you guys. Have a great night. Good night. Bye.